When the Minnesota Fighting Vikings maneuvered in the first round 2021 to move down from 14 to go get Christian Derrissaw as well as pick up a couple of other picks that resulted in Kelamon and Wyatt Davis, who could be good, but Zimmer never gave them the time of day. Not that I'm bitter. Uh, the Vikings hoped that they had landed their future franchise left tackle in Christian Derrissaw. Had a couple of setbacks with uh, a myriad uh, of groin injuries. Finally got on the field, played well for a rookie, and now is starting to get some respect from the national media jabroni haircuts, which we always love. Pro Football Focus named Christian friggin' Derrissaw the pride of Virginia Tech Go Hokies, the Vikings 2022 breakout player. So let's talk about it. Uh, Christian Derrissaw, uh, 2021 PFF grade 71.9. Derrissaw got off to a late start to his rookie year due to a preseason injury. He ended up playing in 11 games, posted a 71.8 PFF grade over that span, ranking 20th of 39 qualifying left tackles. The first round picks run blocking stood out in particular. Derrissaw posted a 77.2 grade in that facet. Not only is that the sixth best among left tackles for the 2021 season, but also the fourth best by rookie at the position in the last decade. Needless to say, the future looks promising for the Virginia Tech prospect and it is always nice you know game recognizes game and like I mentioned Derrissaw give him a full off season where he's healthy give him a full training camp to work on technique which I think will greatly help out in his pass protection I mean run game I, we knew Derrissaw coming in was just a road grader man and so he was going to be top flight in the run game he's scheme agnostic can block in zone can block in man can block in gap he can do everything right so we knew that that was going to be easy out, out the gate and what got him at times was some of the more sophisticated pass rush moves he's got the size he's got the agility he's got great hands I think he just needs reps and uh, with him having that injury in his first training camp that really set him behind the eight ball and essentially he came in in the middle of the season with no real experience uh, no real snaps uh, to speak of in game situations and they're just like, oh here you go here you go here we go. But overall, I think that he did extremely well his rookie year, and it's only going to get brighter. I think that he eventually will play at a Pro Bowl level. I think he'll become one of the more premier left tackles in the game. And if you look at the Vikings tackle setup, man, you love it. Where, So you see in a lot of mock drafts, this is a very good offensive tackle draft, where a lot of teams will have one good tackle, whether it's left tackle, whether it's right tackle, whatever. And you're starting to see teams really try and hammer down and pair up tackles, right? Because tackle, it's expensive, it can be hit or miss, and if you can't get edge protection for your quarterback, it's going to be a tough day. Even though interior pressure is becoming more in vogue, if you can't protect the edge, you can't really do much. And with Derisaw and O'Neal, I think the Vikings could potentially be in great hands, where O'Neal, respect, made the Pro Bowl, got some All-Pro votes as the Best left tackle, uh, best right tackle, nailed it. Uh, in the National Football League, I think he'll keep ascending. I think he'll continue to be in that conversation with a Ryan Ramchek, with a Tristan Wirfs, as who is the best right tackle in the game. So love me some Brian O'Neill. And I think that Derrissaw will ascend those heights as well. Uh, again, let him be healthy. Let him develop. Let him get there. If the Vikings actually do somehow still steal Bill Callahan away from the Browns, which I would love, he and Kevin O'Connell go way back in Washington, that would be amazing. That would be ph phenomenal for his improvement along the the offensive line and Derrissaw I think can become become a premier a left tackle and for the rest of the O line I don't know like it's likely that they're going to stick with some semblance of outside zone uh, since that's what the Rams ran that's what uh, Washington ran when Kevin O'Connell was there so I don't think they're gonna fully go in and go 350 pounders across the board on the inside and run power all the time like uh probably would have happened if Harbaugh got here. But I think Ezra Cleveland is developing nicely as a left guard. I think he's really settling into the inside. Figure something out at center. I mean, maybe, maybe Kevin O'Connell and maybe offensive line coach TBD Bill Callahan could get something out of Garrett Bradbury. Uh, they're obviously not going to pick up his fifth-year option, but you know what can you do there? Wyatt Davis, uh, can he actually get on the field? Can he actually be something? Was it that Wyatt Davis couldn't play or that the Vikings regime under Zimmer didn't know what to do with him? I, I don't really know. It's He's Schrodinger's right guard at this point. We, we don't know. But I think that given his prowess at Ohio State, him being an All-American, uh, I, I, I'm going to go with the player on this one. So the Vikings, I mean, they could have four-fifths of a very solid offensive line if they figure out what's going to go on at center. Maybe they have Wyatt Davis, Moonlight at center. They bring in a guard. Who knows? Well, although, if Tyler Linderbaum got the 12, popping his ass in at center, God, Darisa, Ezra, Linderbaum, Davis, Brian O'Neill, let's go, man. Let's go. But uh, it is nice 
uh, to see a young guy, Christian Derrissaw, getting some love uh, from the national media jabroni haircuts. But your thoughts are thoughts. Christian Derrissaw named the Vikings 2022 breakout player by PFF. Let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But until next time, Skull Production Value. <laughs>